Good day students, um, welcome to this presentation. Um, this is your examination based context session for religious and moral education. And this, I am Mrs. Sonja van Wijk, your tutor for the year 2021. Um, I want to welcome you to the presentation for this subject. I hope you will enjoy this very interesting subject and that you will be successful with your studies during the coming year. Um, you can contact me via phone, SMS or email. It would be preferable that you send me an email if you need any assistance of me. Uh, the contact times, you will see it there, is on a Monday to a Friday from 1700 hours to 1900 hours um, per day not on a Saturday not on a Sunday please I ask you to respect that um, I'm really more than willing to assist you in any case or problems you may experience regarding the subject or the examination the content matter for this subject is quite an extensive workload for this academic year. That's why I want to advise you to start studying well in advance. By doing so and by paying special attention to this presentation, you may be successful and pass this interesting subject. Now, I want to look at some general information. Um, I want to tell you that to fully understand this subject, you really have to read through the whole study guide and you must study. There is parts in every unit that you must study. You must work through the learning outcomes and the learning activities in each unit. All examination scripts are set up in three levels. By now, I think you know it. Most of the questions that um, I asked in a question paper will start with a verb, a certain verb. Therefore, it is very important for you to pay special attention to these verbs you will find a well-constructed list of these verbs and their meanings in the beginning of your study guide. Please, students, make sure that you understand these verbs because they will guide you on how to answer the questions. The most common verbs that will lead my questions will always be on a level one case, it will be a verb like define. When I ask you to define, I expect from you to give me a precise and brief meaning. Describe is also a level one verb. There you had to provide a more detailed feature of an issue. Um, sometimes I will use the verb outline. Here I want you to give an overview and indicate main features in a concise manner. You can explain something by describe and indicate relationship between things. You can either be asked to list things, to state or to name things. Then you must give me a list of names, a list of facts or objects, etc. Um, on a level 4 case, I can ask you to discuss. When I ask you to discuss, you must give a clear description, pointing out positive as well as negative features. It can arrive sometimes, if I ask you, at a conclusion at the end of the question. I can ask you to compare, to determine or to differentiate between two uh, according or relevant criteria, 
that's also a, le a level two question uh, or level two questions. Then level three. Sorry. Um, in level three, I can ask you to compare things by using or facts or criteria by using a, um, a column in, in a column form or in a table form. I can ask you to contrast, point out differences, not similarities, and critically discuss. This is a very high lev level of understanding. Then I can also ask you to argue about a topic or a certain uh, criteria or ideas. Um, then another point I want to uh, bring to your attention is to always write neatly and legible. It's very important. Um, there isn't time to sit and try to make out things on unneatly written um, um, e uh, examination papers. Then I want to tell you, if you had to list or to state or to name, outline, define or explain something, a very helpful hint is to write and dot or mark the facts underneath each other, starting each one in a new line. It makes marking for me easier and you can gain more marks by writing easy, uh, um, uh, um, neatly. Then, listing cannot be done when you are asked to summarize an issue. That's important to remember that. Some questions will expect you to construct the given facts from your study guide, but students, in your own words, remember that, in your own words. Then I also want you to note, there will only be this one presentation. will record for all three examinations next year. So don't call and ask when is the next recording or when is the next presentation. This will be the only presentation. All references in this presentation are from your study guide. Then I want you to remember the information regarding the content of the different units in this presentation are just guidelines to use. This is not um, a scope of the examination script. Please students remember that this is not a scope. This is only um, information regarding the content. Study the correct answers from your returned assignments because 20% of these questions can be asked in an examination. So it's important to um, make sure that you know the correct answers after you have completed the assignments. Then I want to talk about the format of the examination script. All three examination scripts will count out of 120 marks. All questions with sub-questions should be answered. The duration time or of your question papers will be two and a half hours. All questions are compulsory. I I uh, want you to read your questions carefully and make sure you understand what is asked before start answering the question. Marks allocated are a guideline for the amount of facts needed. So um, you can write even a bit more or even a bit less. It's only a guideline. This is the format for the examination. Now I'm going to look at each unit. I've took out a f um, a f uh, from the um, main points or the, the um, important points in each unit. And as you will see, every unit counts. So you had 
to do every unit. Please um, take note of that. In unit one, unit one, I concentrate on the definitions of principles, ethics, rules, laws and morals. Um, for example, I can ask you, what is the difference between a rule and a law? So make sure that you know all the definitions of principles, ethics, rules, laws and morals. Then um, 1.3, define the concept values. Values are things you believe uh, things you believe in are important. It affects the way you function in life. It tends to tell one what is important. So that's just a short definition of values. Uh, we are still in Unit 1. Examples of va uh, values in people's lives today. And what we are expected to adhere to is respect kindness, love, trust, fairness, etc. Then um, 1.4. Define the concept moral education. As you will know, this is important because we are busy with our moral education, our subject, religious and moral education. That's why I want you to know what is the the, the definition for the concept, moral education. It serves to teach children morals and values through the education system. Morals and values are integrated into all lessons with practical examples. It enables learners to grasp concepts and examples of moral educational skills that we must learn our children is respect, helpfulness, finding meaning in things and in life, understanding and being assertive and to courage other. This is simple examples of moral education skills. Then um, you can look at the pillars for a good character. There are certain pillars for a good character. Make sure that you are able to shortly explain them. Not only list them or name them, you must um, be able to shortly explain them. Still in Unit 1, the ways in which teachers and parents could develop a good character in learners. Um, it's, it's beforehand that this is very important because you as a teacher and maybe you as a parent um, must develop um, character in learners to be, become good uh, adults in life. So make sure that you pay attention to that one. Still in Unit 1, the four practical steps that you as a teacher will have to deal with during a, disciplinary, year, a, a disciplinary hearing. Now students, um, in previous um, assignments, um, you just mention the four steps. You just say, describe the situation, ask learners questions to clarify the situation, state the rule or the value, involve the learners in finding solutions. But that question can also count out of 10 marks. And then I expect from you to elaborate on that. You must be able to tell me how will you or what does describe the situation mean? Or how will you involve learners in finding solutions when you deal with a discipline hearing between two learners? And then I must tell you, also in the uh, assignment, students uh, talk about the discipline hearing in um, the corporate life.
this is in school between learners not in the corporate life make sure that you know that principles that all the religions believe in make there are 12 of them I can ask you to list seven, I can ask you to list three, five, or all twelve of them. Make sure that you know them. Um, on page 22, number three, what is the aims of religious and moral education? Why do we teach our children religious and moral education? To promote spiritual, religious, and moral development of the learners? to foster the highest moral and ethical values, to develop and enhance respect for, understanding and tolerance for other people's religion, beliefs, cultures and ways of life. Also important. Then look at, sorry, the functions of a religious leader. Not a community leader students, a religious leader that is a pastor, a priest uh, from a church or a leader from a church, not leaders from a community. It's, it's very important to know the difference between the two. Functions and core values of the Council of Churches in Namibia. Make sure that you know that and that you're familiar with that. Then we go to Unit 2. In Unit 2, the focus is mainly on the books of the Bible that I, um, you had to know by now. I suppose that you know all the books of the Bible by now. The books of the Old as well as the books of the New Testament. Then the main meanings of the books of Genesis and Proverbs is important and as well as the meaning of the Ten Commandments. I think it's very important that we all, as Christians, um, that we know the meaning of the Ten Commandments. It's in Unit 2. Um, also, baptism. Either baptism by water or uh, baptism um, if you are small or if you are an adult. It's important for us as Christians to know what does baptism mean. Um, means and how does different um, religions do it. So make sure you know that. That's the one. Baptism with water. Um, also in Unit 2, what is the difference between the main message of the Old Testament and the main message of the New Testament? They follow uh, one um, they follow on each other. So make sure that you know what is the difference between them. Then we look at Unit 3. In Unit 3, we look at um, different biblical, uh, biblical views on um, things like body piercings and tattoos. What does the Bible say? about tattoos and piercing of our bodies. What does the Bible tell us about a divorce? Um, and what is the roles of a husband and a wife in a Christian marriage? It's important to know that and to learn our future uh, um, leaders and adults of this world. What, what does God expect from us as a husband and a wife in a Christian ma marriage. In, un in Unit 4, we look at the definition of sin. You must be able to give me the definition of what is a sin. Then there's different types of sins. You must be able to um, explain the different types of sins. Then ways how Satan uses uh, pornographic materials to destroy people's lives. You will find that on page uh, 158 to 159. And what must people do to be free and saved from sins? Then the fruit of the Holy Spirit is also important in Unit 5. 
I want you to look at the features of Christian prayer. Like, for instance, the Our Father. Um, can you break down the Our Father? It's important to look at the, the um, Our Father and how will you break it down. And then, what is the meaning of life and death lies in the tongue? Now, I want to read this with you. Words cause death. The tongue can be a very dangerous weapon. Cyberbullying is a huge issue. Bullying led to teenage suicides. Words can destroy relationships. Words spoken out of turn, spoken words uh, lead to destruction and death and leading to breakdown of ma marriages. Words can bring life. Words can also have the exact opposite effect. Words can build up, encourage, etc. So make sure that you know that. Then, what is the difference between a curse and a blessing? I think that's quite easy. And what can you give me an example of a family curse? What is a family curse? Um, there you can give me your own experience or your own uh, view on what is a family curse. Then look at spirits appealing to people when we leave the word of God behind. Um, what spirits will appeal to you? You can read through that. Um, then in unit 6. In unit 6, I want you to look at the relationships between rules, laws, freedom and responsibilities. Uh, I can either ask you what is the difference between a rule and a law. I think we look at it in the beginning as well and look at the characteristics of a healthy society. What uh, does do one expect? How must the society look like to be healthy? Then what is the difference between happiness and fun? To have fun, there's a, it's, it's not the same as to be really happy from your heart. What is the difference between having fun and really being happy? Fun is the feeling of being amused or entertained. Um, that's like when you hang out with friends, visiting places that you should not really be at or indulge in an unhealthy um, meal like junk food or when you fall in love or receive a present you like. Those are fun things to do. It fills you with fun, but it does not necessarily bring happiness. Fun is all in the moment not everlasting. Happiness, on the other hand, brings peace and fulfillment in life. Then, um, how can people benefit from suffer suffering? Would you say God allows people to suffer? God definitely allows people to suffer, but there's a reason for. I want you to go and look on page uh, 234 to 235, why does God people uh, uh, let people suffer? What is his, his intention with that? Then you can look at Unit 7. In Unit 7, I want you to look at the similarities and differences between, between um, Judaism and Christianity. Make sure that you know what is the difference between the two. Then you must also look at Martin Luther. Why? Martha, what is the reasons why Martha Luther, Luther broke away from the Catholic Church? I'm not going to read that through. And then the theological differences between the uh, uh, pro uh, Protestant and the Catholic uh, religions. What is the differences between them? In Unit 8, 
What is the features of the five pillars of Islam? You must be able to name, you can only name the five pillars. You don't have to explain or to elaborate, elaborate on them. In unit 9, um, you must be able to tell me what is a shrine, a monastery, and a stupa. This is places of worshipping. So you must give me a definition of a shrine, a monastery, and a stupa. Then what is meditation and how is it practiced within the Buddhist faith? Um, sorry, make sure not to get confused between meditation of the Buddhist faith and meditation of the Hindus. There is a difference between the two of them. Make sure that you don't get confused between them. In Unit 10, the three most important gods of the Hindu religion and their functions. The Hindu, Hindu religion has three important gods. Please students, if I say three, I mean three. Um, in the assignment, I ask the same question and some of you lose a lot of marks there because you mention seven or eight. There isn't seven or eight. You must go and read this only three, the three most important ones. You must tell me what they are and, um, and what, they, what they are like. Then the symbolism of fire and holy water during Hindu rituals, that's also very important. The reason and process why bodies are crem uh, cremated on a funeral pyre, that's also important. And the symbolism of bathing in holy water. In Unit 11, um, I want you to look at the spiritual teachings of the Baha'i um, um, relation, uh, um, religion. What is the spiritual teachings of the Baha'is? And also, um, what is the social, uh, the social teachings of the Baha'i religion? You must go and look that as well and uh, ways in which the Baha'i attracts followers of other faiths. They attract followers. Why do they do that? What's the reason for that? Um, there I've gave, I give you the answer there. And um, explain the Rastafari spiritual belief, Aital. What does that mean? Aital. What is the difference between the Jehovah's and the Christian beliefs in table form, this could be a level 3 question. Make sure that you know how to do that in table form. Um, in unit 12, you must look at the meaning of work ethics. Very important in today's life. It's your responsibility to teach your, uh, your learners that someone must have good work ethics. What is good work uh, ethics and what is the meaning of that? And different types of work uh, ethics, that's the same that I told you now. Why is gender discrimination still a serious moral issue today. Very important in today's life. Why is it important for all members of the society to be aware of their responsibilities? Then, still in Unit 12, what is the characteristics when you are a good citizen? We all need some characteristics 
to be really a good citizen to our country. And then the positive and negative impact of television on moral fiber of societies. On page 4 to 5 to 4 to 7, you will find the consequences of ignoring and breaking of rules and laws. What happens when people ignore and break rules and laws? People get hurt, property can be damaged, businesses can suffer from it, families can be destroyed, lies are told, lives are disrupted, things can get really unpleasant and there can be um, a repercussions within families and society. And this is the end of this presentation. I want to wish you all the best of luck for your examination for 2021 and I hope you enjoy this um, subject and I hope this will help you and I once again want to invite you to, if you find any difficulties, please contact me. May it be good with you and the best of luck for the next year. Thank you.